Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 83 of Generation GC. Hold on, part one from The Young and the Hopeless, Good Charlotte's second album released in 2002. My name is Molly Huddleston, once again, and as always, I am your host, as well as the producer, creator, and editor of this podcast. Last time, we talked about Let Me Go from Good Charlotte, the band's self-titled debut album, and next week, on Wednesday, December 29th, we'll be back with part two of the Hold On episode. Hold On is a very special song, and I would argue that it's Good Charlotte's most important song. It's not their most popular song, but this song has touched the lives and hearts of so many people out there. Because this song is so special, I wanted to change up the format of the episode. I couldn't possibly pick just one person to talk about this song, so I picked 21. You'll hear 11 today and then 10 on next week's part two episode, and I will also share my own story next week. As background, Hold On is track eight on The Young and the Hopeless. It peaked at number 63 on the Billboard Hot 100, number 17 on the Mainstream Top 40, and number 34 in the UK. According to setlist.fm, which we all know is not always totally accurate, it's been played 193 times, making it Good Charlotte's ninth most frequently played song. If you've seen Good Charlotte any time since, you know, 2002, if you've seen them, headline especially, you've probably heard this song. Hold On means so much to so many people, and it didn't feel right to me to focus on what critics said or anything like that, so this time it's 100% about you. This episode and next week's part two is about the Good Charlotte fans who are here to share their own stories. Today, I am honored to share conversations with 11 individuals, including several past guests and some new voices. First up, you'll hear Mark Giuliano of Goalkeeper, who was previously on episode 37, Standing Ovation. Up next is Leah Knight from episode 20, Something Else. Following that is Alicia Cherubino, episode 73, Generation Rx. After Alicia, you will hear Carla J, a new voice, and then you'll hear Ashley Rayburn, who was on episode 14, Anxiety. Up next is Kate Burtz, who was on episode 35, Meet My Maker. Then we've got Loriana Lasavita, episode 32, Better Demons. And Darina Samoylenko, episode 65, Actual Pain. You'll hear Jose Murillo, who is a new voice, Sam Warren, who was on episode 16, Cold Song. And then finally, you'll hear Emma Wheatley, another new voice. You'll hear each guest introduce themselves, and then the discussions will begin. Hold On is a heavy song, and as a warning, in these two episodes, you will hear talk about suicide, depression, mental illness, and other difficult topics. If you're in the U.S., you can call 1-800-273-TALK, that's 1-800-273-8255, or text HOME to 741-741 for Crisis Text Line. In Canada, you can call the Crisis Assistance Hotline at 833-456-4566, and in the UK, you can call Samaritans, 116-123, or text SHOUT to 85258. I'm also going to link resources in the show notes. I'm so honored that so many people were ready to come on Zoom and share their stories with me. I mean, I, I truly just, I can't say enough like how much it meant to me that people were just so ready to talk to me and, and felt felt comfortable to open up to me and to open up to everyone listening. This episode does get pretty intense, but I really hope that it connects with you wherever you are, whatever you're going through, whatever you've been through. If this is too much for you, if it's bringing up too many tough emotions and you need to turn it off and want to listen at a later date, that's okay. This is feels like the most important thing I've ever done, but part of that to me is making sure that everyone listening feels comfortable and feels okay in listening. As some show notes, I do want to say, as always, that I love having guests from all around the world and from all different backgrounds on Generation GC. If English isn't your first language, that's okay. As long as you're comfortable holding a conversation in English, you're good to go. And different backgrounds doesn't just mean location or ethnicity. That means ensuring a varied gender and sexuality representation, representing fans of different ages and fans with their own unique life experiences. 
I also want to mention, again, blacklivesmatters.card.co, antisemitism.card.co, and anti-violenceresources.card.co. You'll find all of those linked in the show notes. And finally, Generation GC stickers are here. If you do want a sticker, there's two things you can do. Number one, as always, you can support the show on Anchor. Go to anchor.fm slash generation GC pod and click support. That money helps me keep the show going. And number two, you can donate to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Go to AFSP.org. If you're not in the U.S. and there's a local charity to you for suicide prevention or mental health and you want to make a donation to them, that's just fine. So you're going to support the show or make your charitable donation, and then you will send me a screenshot that you did show, as well as your mailing address, and I will send you stickers. Please make sure to keep up with Generation GC at Generation GC Pod on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'll post all updates about the show there. Thank you again for tuning in, and I can't wait to hear what everyone thinks of this episode. Hey everyone, Mark from Goalkeeper, uh, Philadelphia pop punk band, and uh, just got to release a new EP and a reimagined track over the pandemic. So that was really exciting, and coming getting to come on to here and talk with you and about Good Charlotte and some of our influences is awesome to do all in like the same year. Yeah, and listeners, Mark was on a previous episode of the show talking about standing ovation. So mm-hmm. I am very happy to have you back, Mark. Um, Thank you. And Mark, I would love to hear what it was like for you hearing Hold On for the first time and what what about the song stuck out for you? Yeah, so when I was like getting into pop punk, which was, I guess like, oh, I guess high school, pretty much the same for everybody. Um, and then I actually found out what the genre was called because <laughs> I <laughs> right, always knew right. that. I, already, I, <laughs> I, I, I think I said this in the last episode, like I knew that Blink-182 and Green Day existed and Newfound Glory and Bowling for Soup, but I didn't realize that was a thing called pop punk. I thought it was just mm-hmm. rock, like pop era sounding rock. Um, and so then when I was introduced to the idea, the genre of pop punk, that's when like, oh, Newfound Glory. And like, what are other bands that relate? Oh, Good Charlotte, Cartel, things like that. Um, and I was, I remember playing, I think it was like playing video games with my friends online one day and I just had Pandora playing and like the song came on and admittedly, like, the verses really didn't catch me. I was just kind of like, okay, it's just kind of like a down, quieter song. And then all of a sudden, that big drum beat, mm-hmm. that pop, 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 right in, right before the first chorus and how the chorus just exploded. I think I remember, like, kind of, like, jumping for a second, like, holy shit. Because <laughs> I remember actually turning up the radio a little bit, saying, ah, it's a little bit quiet. But I didn't realize like how much they stacked into the song to make it so much bigger. And I was like, Jesus. And then I caught my attention, started paying attention. I was just like, damn, you know, and during the time suicide and mental health was running. I mean, it's a very serious nature all the time, sure, but yeah. there was like a high school near me that had 13 suicides in one school year. Wow. Um, and, and like not Jeez. even, and like they were all brutal. I'm not going to go into details in yeah, case yeah. that's a sensitive topic and everything, but they were very brutal stories. And it was all in the same year that high school had to go on lockdown for the entire year. Uh, a lot of the kids who cause went to Catholic school, so they were part of that public school system, but they came to us. Um, like all their friends. Wow. Yeah. And a lot of like their friends were like the ones who did pass away. And so they were feeling the same they were feeling the same type way they were feeling they had suicidal ideation stuff like that so i remember hearing the song and then being like wow this is super relatable to like my time now in high school and um i think for me when i first heard the song was i I like how good charlotte does a really good back and forth where you can listen to it and you can almost automatically assume it's talking to those who are struggling and with the thoughts of suicide and Mm -hmm everything like that but you can also hear you can take the message i feel and twist it not twist it but like look at it from a um from like this family and friends perspective like hey we are all going through this too yeah um and we all know this sense of loss um and i think that related more for me in that sense because i wasn't going through the suicide ideation but i had a lot of friends who like had friends who, like I said, like passed away. So there's right. very much like 
yeah, we're all feeling this sense of loss together. Yeah. I, I want to first touch on, and thank you for sharing that. Um, I, I, I want to first touch on what you said about just like the drums going into the chorus, because I feel like even if you weren't, you know, reading the lyrics, you could tell that that build up to the mm -hmm. chorus is just this like massive, just like emotional release. And you mm -hmm. have these very like quiet, kind of calm, soft spoken verses and such pow such a powerful, explosive chorus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, I think that's like, obviously the chorus is the hook of the song. It's where yeah. you really want the nature of the song to be heard. I think they did a really, really good job with that. Um, because when you just hear that first line, like, hold on, mm -hmm. and just with such power, I feel like, yeah, again, if you're going, if you were going, you know, through like the depressive episodes and suicide ideation, that really grabbed you to be like, wait a second, yeah. let me stop. Let me think, let me maybe get myself the help that I, like, that I need. And at the same time, then, if you were, like you said, the, the person's friends and family who were going through the grieving process, like, yeah, same thing. So um, we use that all the time in, like, our types of songs, especially if music. It's like, okay, like, what's the first line of the chorus? And that has to be incredibly powerful and incredibly emotional. Um, and then the transition to the chorus has to be great, too. And so I think just speaking on behalf of that song musically, they did a phenomenal job really grabbing the emotion and like you said like mm -hmm. that build up to make it just a very very well crafted like ballad and emotion of a song especially when they were going up against the heavy hitters at the time with uh i mean stay together for the kids would come out shortly after adam's yeah. song was already out adam's song was um, already out that's a good point and uh but i mean a lot of post hardcore bands were coming out you know, the, even like the late 90s with a lot of uh, songs of that nature too. So it's for yeah. them to really be able to, to to speak about what's already been spoken about, but in such a very unique and original way to really mm -hmm. capture um, like the emotion and really help people feel connected to some way is incredible, especially yeah. again, with the nature of all the songs that were out at that time that related to that concept. There were definitely a lot of songs out at that time. And I feel like, over i mean we could like dissect the history right of like quote-unquote anti-suicide songs um mm -hmm. but it seems like just that that the timing of the song for you was obviously huge and uh the the impact it had on your songwriting i think was really mm -hmm. significant as well mm -hmm. yeah and especially around then was when i was like really getting into the idea of like being in a band and learning how to write songs mm -hmm. and just especially musically because my my big thing is i'm not a lyric i'm not a great lyricist but i like to write the music side of things mm -hmm. and so when you can take something as simple as they did and it make it so powerful that's like that's just ingenious yeah <laughs> so um yeah so i think kind of like you know it, it definitely hit on multiple levels. One, the emotional side of like just what the like the youth of my area were going through with yeah. so many losses, and just being like, "Wow, this re really relates." But on more than just anti-suicide, also relates to the grieving process that everyone was going through. Mm -hmm. But then also, as I was really trying to find the songs that really stuck out to me as far as the way I wanted to write music, that did it as well. So. And I feel like if you're gonna, I feel like if you're gonna write a song that's serious too, like it has to be done right because it can yes. be so easy, you know, to. I don't want to say like make a mockery of it. That's not the right word, but it's yeah. so easy to be like so cliche where it's like, did you do this just because, you know, or is it something that you really wanted to do? And I felt that they put a lot of emotion and that they probably all personally were going through that. Yeah, at some point too. And they they definitely have spoken in other songs that are more clearly first person, um, whereas mm -hmm. this is a very second person song. Like it's talking to someone, but maybe there is an element of like uh, maybe the the genuine aspect of this song comes from like what would I have wanted to hear mm -hmm. when I was in that space? What do I need yeah. to hear when I am in that space? Mm -hmm. 
absolutely and i think that's a really good sense of songwriting at that point too because yeah i mean i remember hearing um there was an interview <laughs> excuse me with green day and when they wrote american idiot they said what made that record so powerful was that they were able to like reinvent themselves and mm, yeah. speak no longer about just the the first person and not the sense that good charlotte reinvented themselves however i felt like they were able to gravitate and move into that second person like you were saying which is very hard to do with yeah. songwriting in general um yeah. and that's coming from obviously personal experience <laughs> yeah so um but yeah and i think you know they did a great job with that and i mean knowing a little bit about that record and how it wasn't like as successful to the critics <laughs> as it was like mm -hmm. the fans mm -hmm. um i think that was kind of like that song really in it captures that like this is a record for the fans like yes. screw with the critics screw with the critics that you can give us a one star <laughs> out of yeah. five but you know having songs like you know um <clears throat> excuse me hold on really show that they were just thinking about what they were going through personally and how it would resonate with their fans yeah and not going for like the the rolling stone cover <laughs> yeah i think that's a great point and i i mark this has been wonderful just thank you for sharing you know how it related to what you were going through at the time and just how it's influenced your songwriting and and uh, that's such a good point just about them you know being able to speak from some sort of sort some form of personal experience too thank you mark thank you uh, my name is Leah Knight. I um, am from Texas. Uh, my pronouns are she and her, and I am a 30-year-old married woman of one beautiful little girl. And listeners, Leah was previously on the show talking about the song Something Else. I think that was episode 20. Mm -hmm. Leah, I'm so happy to have you um, on board for this special Hold On episode. And I would just love to start out by asking what Hold On means to you. So Hold On for me um, is a song that in my mind holds very strong significance simply because of the message that even if, if what you're going through is at the moment unbearable, you will quit, you will cross that, you will get through it. Yeah. it there is nothing that you can't get through. and. Um, for me, I found that out when I was 17 and went through um, quite a traumatic experience. Um, and that song kind of really registered a little bit more than it did when it came out. And I first listened to it when I was 13. So um, that it just holds a very strong significance for me. Do you think that like if you had heard it for the first time when you were 17, it might've felt different? Or was it like, this is something I know and I'm like kind of going back to it because I can feel a pull to it now? Um, it's kind of hard to say, but I really feel like it was more like, I feel a pull to it now. Okay. Because when I first heard it when I was 13, I understood the meaning behind it because sure, yeah. quite frankly, I had a very long conversation with my dad about it at that age because Unfortunately, he's had a lot of good friends that he went to school with who um, have taken their own lives, yeah. them, sadly. And so I had a very in-depth conversation with him about that when I was 13, when it first came out. And then whenever um, I went through my experience when I was 17, uh, it just really, I just, I immediately was drawn back to it and just remembered all those conversations I had with my dad about that. And so that was kind of my, okay, uh, this is hard at the moment, but I can get through this now. Yeah. What, aside from the song itself, like, what has helped you hold on, um, I guess, through that experience? Or if you want to share in general, like, what has just helped pull you whenever you had, like, dark kind of moments? So, aside from the song itself, what really struck me, and it still does to this day, is the music video itself. Yes, yeah. And there is a scene where a dad is talking about, I guess, I don't know if he's talking about his son or his daughter. He doesn't really specify, I don't think, but he said the words, this is, or something to the effect of, 
this is not how the course of events should go. It shouldn't be you burying your kids. It should be your kids burying you. Yeah. And that has, even to this day, it's been 20 years, oh, a little bit less than maybe that this song came out. Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that has just sat with me. And it's mm-hmm. because I feel, and I, I felt, and I still feel that pain that the parent experienced. And I told myself, you know, especially whenever I kind of went back to the song when I was 17, that I don't ever want my parents to feel that. I don't ever want my sister to feel that pain. So that to me was enough to just, just pull through. It was hard. It was very hard. Not, not that I didn't have some bumps in the road, but it it was it was difficult but it it really helped me yeah it definitely like that music video cuz i was just rewatching it before we got on and i was like wow like that that's i know exactly the story you're talking about um the scene and that that is all that is the one that just like gets me like yeah me too no other cuz it's kind of yeah. yeah it's just like not the order of things right it's not it's absolutely not i mean you know and i unfortunately you know if it's my time in, you know, a way that is out of my control, like, you know, car accident, that's one right, thing, right. but certainly not by the hands of myself, you know? Yeah. So if you could go back and tell yourself one thing, like, what would you tell like 17 year old Leah? That's like in a dark place. What would you tell her? Um, you got to hang around because in about three years, two, actually, two, you're going to end up meeting the love of your life and you're going to get married and everything that you're feeling now is, is going to be something that you are going to take with you, but you're going to teach yourself that it does not define who I am. It does not, it does not change who I am. And then just take with you this lesson that you've learned and apply it to not only yourself, but to your daughter when you have one, which you will when you're about about five, well, I was 25 whenever I had her. So about five years from then. And just, you just, just, it's hard now, but you got to just hang around. You will pull through. It's Easier said than done, but you will pull <laughs> Definitely through. Definitely easier said than done. Yeah. Um, I guess something, just the last thing I would love to ask you, and I'm kind of having a fun time just as I, I think about this and in conversations I will continue to have. Uh, are there any other songs that you would want to mention that had like a similar effect on you, whether they're good Charlotte songs or, you know, any other artists? Um goodness me not that i can think of what what's going to happen is i'm going to be thinking of this question later and i'm going <laughs> to like, be like oh but you'll like dm it. me like, yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um well feel free not, you know to message me and, and i'll add them when i do the playlist and everything so okay yeah um not off the top of my head i'm sure i'm sure it's there um i just i just can't i just can't think of it off the top of my head so yeah all right. Well, yeah, this has been really cool. Um, is there anything else that you just wanted to share about what Hold On kind of means to you and what makes it special to you? Um, I just, my message that I kind of just want to share is that kind of like I said in the beginning, everything that we experience in life may not be fair and it may be difficult, but there is nothing in this world that is so damaging in my and this is my opinion because i've i've learned this the hard way yeah but there's nothing in this world that is so damaging that you this is the extreme that you need to go to and it's something that my dad taught me and i i again hold on to this very strongly but he told me a long time ago he said everything in life is temporary so nothing in your resolution should be permanent so i i have held on to that because you know like I said, when I went through my 
experience and I had talked to yeah. him about it. He, he did say that he said, remember, this is temporary. So don't go doing something permanent. Listen. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I love yeah. that. Leah, this has been great. Thank you so much for sharing that. Hi, my name is Alicia Cherubino. My pronouns are her, her, and she, her, hers, and she. I've been a good Charlotte fan for 19 years. Holy crap. Um, I am 31 years old. I live in California from Boston, and I work as a nurse. Amazing. Alicia, I would love to hear about, to start off, just what hold on means to you and what, what impact it's, it's had on you. So hold on for me is obviously a very special song, right? And I have been fortunate enough to never have to deal with suicidal, depressive thoughts. Um, when I was younger, maybe I think I was 15, my best friend was really struggling with that. Um, she made a suicide attempt, which was very scary for someone who never like was exposed to that at such a young age. It was really yeah. scary to get that kind of news and be like, what does that even mean? My only exposure to that kind of thing was hold on. Just no, I just knew that they wrote that song to prevent that. My best friend, who's still my best friend now, she um, wasn't a good Charlotte fan, which didn't really matter, but <laughs> I sent her the lyrics to yeah. hold on um, when she was like in a really depressed state. And um, we got through that time period and afterwards she became a good Charlotte fan and we've seen them together live three times. That's so it's, I don't know if it, if that brought us together more, but it was just really cool to see, or if, if that song even like helped her through anything, but it was really cool just to see that it impacted her in some way and it brought us closer, at least in the music realm of things. I think just on like a general level, it's, it's both like, Number one, just speaking like super generally, like if you can open up to someone about something so vulnerable as like, you know, depression and suicidal ideation or a suicide attempt, that shows that like you have that trust and that closeness. But it, conversely, complimentary, I guess, when you do open up, I think that increases trust and closeness with someone. Yeah, that's so true. That's really true. And like looking back on it too, I definitely think that brought us closer in general. And I think that's made us bond for such a long time because it's yeah. been like 15 years now. Wow. What, so had you guys been talking about like music together before, before you showed her uh, GC and Hold On or was that like really the first time you guys ever talked about music? Oh no. So at that age, most of my friendships had the base of music. Like, even if <laughs> yeah. people didn't like Good Charlotte or my bands, it was general rock, like, hardcore punk, whatever. That was the base of our friendships, pretty much. And so a lot of overlap happened, a lot of separation happened. But we definitely talked about music before. And it was kind of like, I'm sure, you know, people hated Good Charlotte because they were mm -hmm. not punk enough or whatever. Yeah. So everyone looked down on it. But then once she saw that she started listening to them more like oh, i like this song i like that song and it just grew yeah so were you like were you with her when she heard hold on for the first time or did you like kind of tell her to listen to it i don't even know when she actually first heard it to be honest with you because again this is really dating myself i sent her sure. the lyrics through myspace message amazing, <laughs> like, hey, amazing TV, yeah yeah <laughs> um but I don't, so I don't know when she actually started listening to them, but I just know, I think I copied and pasted lyrics from some website yeah. and told her it was good Charlotte. And I really don't know when she started listening to them, honestly, but it started after. What was it like when you saw good Charlotte with her? Cause they pretty much always play hold on. So was that like any kind of special moment for you too, hearing that? kind of hard because like when you're on the floor you're not like come together and <laughs> yeah, like you're yeah. separated and sweaty so when I was with her I wasn't actually next to her I was in front okay. of her um but in general when we listen to Good Charlotte together or reference them or anything there's always like a little like look in our eyes so I think I think she knows I think it's yeah. there like the the knowing the like the kind of unspoken knowing 
Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I, I love that. And I'm so glad that, uh, hold on was just able to be such a important song, you know, for you, not just like to be something that helped your friend, but that kind of continued to bring you guys closer together. Yeah. Um, cause that happened early on in our friendship, actually. I like, think we became friends like earlier that school year and okay. happened, like more towards summer. And so we definitely got closer over time. And then just looking back on it again, I don't really know like how much that meant to her or if she'd even meant anything to her. I'm sure just me being there meant a lot to her. Yeah. But it meant a lot to me. And I always said, if I ever meet good Charlotte, I have to tell them. So the very first time I met them three times, not bragging, just saying. <laughs> um, when the, fir the first time I met them, I like word vomited everything I wanted to say. And I was able Amazing. to tell them about that. And it just like meant so much to me just to be like, hey, I love you guys and you really helped me and my best friend. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a really great story. And they're always like every, I, I think every single story anyone's either told me on the podcast or that I've just like heard from people is like always just so, you know, really sweet. And they, they always want to hear that stuff. Uh, yeah. Like that time I met them, I didn't know what they would be like because I never mm -hmm. met them before. Right. And so, but after meeting them that first time, it's obvious that no matter how many times they hear stories like that, it means so much to them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Alicia, this has been really great. And thank you for being a part of this very special episode. Well, thank you, Molly, for having me. Yeah. It's an amazing episode, amazing song. So thank you. thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Carla J. My pronouns are she, her. I am from sunny Southern California. I am a sunbathing baby. Um, I am a video content producer for a company called Odyssey. I'm on the national team, and they are a mother company that owns a ton of radio stations across the U.S. If you're from the Los Angeles OC area, then you might know of World Famous K-Rock, 97.1 Now, uh, those stations. I love Tupperware. That's a really random, weird fact. I don't know why I just blurted that. I have a that. massive Tupperware collection, too. Oh, so my gosh. You understand I, I me. It. I get it. I get it. You get it. I get it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, because every time I say that, I get the weirdest looks, but you just you just have to understand. I you love have, Tupperware. I use Tupperware instead of, like, as much as I can instead of, like, plastic bags just because it's reusable, better for the environment. So, Carla, I would love to hear what makes Hold On special to you. Okay. Um, Hold On is special to me because it speaks volumes to mental health and validates every single emotion a human could possibly feel, whether that's happiness or even desolation and sorrow. Mm -hmm. Hold On is uh, special to me because as a Filipino American, there are certain topics that are taboo within the community. And one of those topics is mental health. If you say you need therapy, you're looked at crazy. Really? Or if you're, yeah. A hundred percent. I remember, you know, telling my mom that I felt sad or depressed and she would look at me and say, how can you be depressed? You have everything. Right. You have your own room. You have, you know, we buy you everything that you need. How can you be depressed? Um, there's also a disconnect between Filipino Americans and Filipinos back home in the Philippines. And if you are honest and say that you feel depressed, sometimes those people will say, how can you be depressed? You live in the in America, so you must be rich and happy. Just be grateful. You, and you live in California. Yeah. yeah, you live in California. You're not suffering the plight here in back home in the Philippines. You're in America. Everything is perfect, and you should be happy. I don't know why you're depressed. It sounds like you're looking for attention. Um, but the thing that makes Hold On so special to me is that it's also a very timeless song. Yes. So whether you're 13 and in your bedroom listening to it after a long day at school right. because you got picked last at gym class or however you're feeling, or you're 30 <laughs> and blasting it in your car after a terrible work day, um, it'll move mountains for eras to come. So that's yeah. what's special about Hold On. That's a really good point, uh, by the way, that the fact it, the song is so timeless. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to touch on just what you said about feeling like mental health was taboo. Because I feel like that would, I, I can only imagine how tough that would make it to 
get help if yeah. if possible at all to get help if mm -hmm. it's you know accepted at all oh yes it's mental health is one of the most taboo topics and it's not talked about enough within the filipino community it's very no one it's not that people don't believe it but if that there's only one side to therapy or one side to mental health if you say you need therapy, even if you're perfectly fine but you just there's things to unpack there's people within the community that might think you're crazy you're gonna off yourself that you need medication but it could just be simply for the fact that therapy is healthy even the most happiest people who don't have very many issues therapy is important just to talk about everything and unpack and talk about things but yeah within the filipino community just it's not talked about often and it's very especially within the older generation of like my parents they're yeah. boomers <laughs> um, <laughs> they don't really understand it i want to say that younger generation of filipino americans and probably filipinos in the philippines they are changing the path and paving this road for mental health and being mm -hmm. more honest about it so i think that's some that it's changing and it's um people are becoming more honest about it that's great i mean that's great yeah. that, that there's a change coming i i can't imagine that's a i guess microcosm reflection of society as a whole but it sounds like the cultural you know pressures just make it stronger and a tougher thing to mm -hmm. overcome yeah for sure it i would love to hear carlo i would love to hear a story about a time when hold on connected with you okay so hold on is an everlasting connection oh, yeah. and it's been part of my story since its release um as i said and um, I'm Filipino American and I am super, super proud of my heritage. I immigrated to the US in the 90s and I grew up in a really strict, toxic environment. I face identity issues because I was too Asian to be American. But when I assimilated into the ideal American or trying to be as white as possible, suddenly I was too whitewashed to be Filipino. And I faced teen angst just like any other teen like, where out do there. I fit? Yeah, where do I fit in? Um, but my teen angst was also encapsulated by societal and cultural pressures as well. I had a lot of aspirations to work within the entertainment industry. I grew up doing musical theater. I was a writer. I just wanted to work within the music industry or the entertainment and music sure, industry. Yeah. And it was an aspiration that was laughed at by my parents. They constantly berated and belittled me. Um, they uh, wanted me to become a nurse or engineer. I was also bullied a lot in elementary school all the way up till my senior year in high school. And I moved around a lot. So from Japan to Texas to Northern California, there was always a mean kid in every little section I lived in and they would always bully me. And I just wanted way out and not in the typical punk rock, I got to get out of my small town type of way. I just needed a way out. But as good Charlotte says, hold on, it gets better than you know. And I did it. I held on. I followed all of my dreams and yeah, elevated. Yeah, K-Rock? Like, <laughs> anyone anywhere in the country knows what K-Rock is. Like, yeah, so cool. legendary. Yeah, so I elevated to my most highest frequencies, and I did things that only my younger self would not believe. After college, my first gig was radio, working as promotions assistant, and I just Amazing. kept moving up. Yeah, so I kept moving up, and until I was a video content producer for eight major LA stations, one of which is world famous K-Rock and I love music. I love going to concerts. And so being able to create video and working with the jocks and going to concerts for free and getting paid to be there <laughs> is oh, that's a freaking like dream. The best job, right? Yeah. That's the best, best thing ever. And when Good Charlotte had their comeback show at the Troubadour in West Hollywood, tickets sold out so fast. I remember sure, yeah. I was on a shift and I was on my phone trying to get tickets, but I think it sold out within what 
10, 10 seconds. Oh, I'm sure it was very quick, yeah. It was very quick. And for those that don't know, the Troubadour is a stand-only yeah, yeah. stand venue. It's very, very tiny. So it, as imagine, and Good Charlotte hadn't played a show in years. And so all of us were trying to go. And I find out that the only tickets left, and I think it was either Benji or Joel had tweeted it saying the only tickets that are out is with k-rock and the second i knew this i ran straight to the my boss and i was able to go to the show for free amazing and it was the best ever it was i cried amazing. the entire time it was crazy as you do right yeah you know <laughs> and the very next day joel come to the station um i wasn't sure if they were on air that day or if they were coming in for a music meeting to share their new music with the music director mm -hmm. but i was walking to the copy machine when i literally bump into them in the hallway i'm oh turning the God. corner i have my cop things i need to copy in my hand and out from the other corner is both benji and joel and my jaw drops in my head because I'm also in work mode so we're not right. supposed to right. do anything but as they pass I just nicely oh great show yesterday right. and right. kind of just walk on by trying not to fangirl even though my head was literally having I was going <laughs> crazy spinning. I was right. about right. to drop down and that's when everything came full circle and I became super grateful that I held on because it just came full circle I love just, that. That's wow, an amazing that story, yeah. Carla. That's yeah, incredible. Thank you. <laughs> um, just as we wrap up, I mm -hmm. would love to hear from you. Like, if you have any advice for Filipino Americans that are really struggling with their mental health, it, mm -hmm. what what would you like to say for any Filipino Americans who are struggling with their mental health? The first thing that I could say is to just be honest with at least yourself, and just remember that you are a hundred percent not alone and anything you feel is 100 percent valid and you don't need to find credibility in your emotions or how you're feeling just because you have a car or you go to a great school or maybe you have a job that's pays you a lot of money or you ha still have both of your parents and they're not divorced just because you have all of that or maybe none of that doesn't mean that you can't be depressed being yeah. depressed they it doesn't get to pick it's not picky yep, it'll just it'll just pick you at any time so to any filipino americans just be honest with yourself and as soon as you can try to find help um, there are resources. Thankfully, we do live in an era of digital. So there are even digital therapists now. And there yeah. are ways, yeah, and there are ways to get help and have virtual therapy sessions via your phone, through text message. There are ways to get yeah, it. Yeah, there's like, like apps, yeah. Yeah, there's apps. There's ways to get it for free or for at a very low price. So even if you're working a part-time job um, and don't have the financial means to do so there are ways and even when i was growing up and the mental health not just within the filipino community but just mental health in general within society just wasn't talked about enough i even didn't know where to find to how to get therapy and so i would look to trusted adults so whether that was school counselors to yeah. my ap english teacher um to any other trusted adults that I could find to listen to. So definitely look at your resources, go online, do some research, talk to people that you trust, but just know that you're not alone, that what you feel is 100% valid. And just to be honest with yourself and just get the help so you can keep holding on and live your best life. Carla, that was wonderful. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank I, you for having me. This was really cool. And, you know, I make it a goal that I really want to reach people, both in terms of listeners as well as like the guests I have on the show. Like, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that everyone listening to the show feels like they're represented. And I'm so mm -hmm. glad that you, you know, were open to talking about your heritage and your community. I, I feel like that's really going to connect with people. Yeah, that makes me so happy. <laughs> My name is Ashley Rayburn. I uh, go by she or her, and I am a Live Nation venue worker here in Detroit, Michigan. 
Amazing. And listeners, Ashley was previously on the show. She was on one of the first bonus episodes we did on the song Anxiety from Greatest Remixes. Uh, and I'm so happy to have you back, Ashley. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Well, Ashley, I would love for you to tell me a story about a time when Hold On connected with you. Um, it was one of the hardest moments in my life, but I will never forget it. So it's something that sticks um, with me. Uh, growing up, didn't have a whole lot of friends. I feel like that's a very common theme uh, of oh, yeah. everybody. But yes. since middle school, I had a, a core group of about five best friends. Um, like one of their dads called us the Fab Five and everything. Um, we were just the close-knit, quiet, weird kids who connected through Good Charlotte, Avril, Simple Plan. Amazing. Um, and then, so on November 17th, 2018, Kelly and Alyssa, who have been on the show before as well, um, we were all at the Generation RX tour in Portland, Oregon. Uh, it was at the Roseland Ballroom. And right before Knuckle Puck went on stage, I got a message on Facebook from one of my best friends, one of these five girls. And I knew something was wrong because we were all kind of like in our own space, you know, after high school, you live on your own. But like we were still like when we got together, like nothing mattered. Like we were right back in high school, middle school, arguing in choir class. Um, and I knew something was wrong. And she asked me where I was, what I was doing. And my anxiety, ironically, started to skyrocket. And right, yeah. she told me that... Um, Jordan, who was part of our five, passed away. She oh would have been God. 28 at the time. And I just, I could, I like, I went numb completely in the middle of the mosh pit, front row. And I'm just like, I don't understand. And she told me that she had taken her own life. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. So in that moment, like, I just, like, I did, like, like, the knuckle puck came on stage, and I was like, I, I don't know, like, I wanted to run, like, so far, but I had this, these two amazing women next to me, just holding me, security guards were checking on me, trying to figure out what's going on, <laughs> yeah, but, like, honestly, like, I think I blacked out during every part of the show, except for when, um, because it was, I, really wanted to run um when sleeping with sirens started playing better off dead because mm. that, that would be a hard one too real hard um and then just kind of blacked out again after that and i knew it was in the set time because we had been doing all the shows up till then <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um for hold on to come on and the girls knew it too so immediately they just like grabbed a side of me and held on so tight and in that moment, like as an angry 16-year-old, hold on meant a lot too, yeah. um, trying to keep me off the ledge. But it was something completely new in this moment. Yeah, It was so fresh. And watching everybody else like in the crowd just crying along with it for their own reasons, whether it's that they had been there to the edge or they had lost somebody too. But... In that moment, I just, I had never felt so connected to a time and space. And I felt so guilty because, like, why wasn't I home? Like, why weren't you with your friend and her family? because yeah, she lived not too far away. And I felt so bad for being so far away. But I knew for myself I was in the right time and exactly where I needed to yeah. be. Because if I was at home, I don't think I could have handled that. Yeah being on my own and, and trying to process that. But hearing these stories, whether it was the boys on stage and their own battle personally and people that they've lost to the people beside me who I knew had been through the same thing. And mm -hmm. it just, it was overwhelming, but it was the only other, like the only place I could ever imagine being hearing that mm -hmm. kind of news. And it just, it changes the song it changes everything about it from like the rest of the tour like i think we still did like eight more days after that <laughs> um 
it just it was they held on extra tight to me during every yeah. performance and it took me back to being that teen to where i didn't think i could ever get through it too and just gave me more ammunition to keep going yeah and do it for her because she wasn't going to be able to to go past that and it was just yeah. it's something you'll never forget you definitely had i i can't imagine better people to be surrounded by in that moment no no and somehow the next day um we had meet and greet and the guys found out mm. and the amount of support and care and like kind words that came from them it was just a testament to who they are as people yeah. and like further confirmation that this song is so genuine in its roots and where it comes from mm -hmm. and again it just i'll never like i had personal issues to where this song was so important to me but being an adult and losing someone like that yeah and then being still like at where i was when i was like 16 lost in the crowd yeah um, it, it changes a lot in how you view it and knowing that support system that i had it would have been a very much more difficult time to get through on my own and i'm just i'm beyond thankful for everything yeah. that this song still holds up to be i thank you so much ashley for sharing that um i i'm so sorry still you know for your loss but I, I i'm just so glad you were you know just surrounded by the people you needed to be surrounded by in that moment definitely i'm so thankful for all of those people that were there and obviously the boys <laughs> well we have a couple minutes left and i really would love to ask about some of your hold on tattoos i do i have two so okay, one so when i was uh, i think i was 17 back way back in the day i have the logo like the logo from self-titled so the old english gc and the banner underneath but on the banner instead of good toilet i put hold on i love that that is so fun and it's right on the back of my neck so like everybody's like oh is that for good toilet? I'm like, yes yes it is i love that that is so cool and then um uh in the middle of my back so just a little bit further down i have a pair of headphones um, and out of the headphones is like a, a music staff kind of streaming out. So what I did is I got the tabs from online and I, the <sighs> notes that are during it gets better than, you know, I took that, that line of music and I had him copy it exactly. And then I put, it gets better than, you know, underneath it as well. I love that. That's it's so the, cool. So, music. so wait, how many GC tattoos do you have now? <laughs> like 27 ish 28 <laughs> i wasn't sure if you'd gotten any more since uh since i had you on the show like uh, about a year ago i have one uh, planned for last december coming up so uh, oh god ashley thank you so much for coming on and talking about this it's been it, just such and i'm only you know not even a like, quarter of the way through maybe just such an honor to be able to connect with people like you and just have everyone like share what are honestly like i mean and this show gets heavy and intense even as we did the last time we did an episode but this has been like the most intense but it's been so wonderful and i'm so glad that you know you are trusting me to open up and i'm so happy you're a part of this i think this is honestly their most universally con connective song yeah because that's no why matter, i knew it had to yeah. be a group yeah yeah no matter who you are where you've been you've most likely been affected by suicide in some mm -hmm. some manner especially yeah. with this past year oh my goodness yeah a lot of people are struggling this past year and there's going to be resources listeners i'll put resources at the top of the show there it's going to be in the show notes and if this is at any point listening if this is just tough for you to listen to it's okay you know turn it off pick back up in a couple weeks when we're on to some lighter topics again uh, i'm kate verts and i have been a gc fan for 20 years now i think uh an awfully long time and i'm 
just a huge animal lover and all about music in general. So Amazing. And listeners, Kate was previously on the show. I think it was episode 34, 35, something like that, talking about Meet My Maker from the Chronicles of Life and Death. And Kate, I'm so happy to have you back. And I wanted to start off our conversation by asking what makes Hold On special to you? Um, it had come out, um, I think I was 13. Okay. Um, around, so obviously just a really hard time in everybody's lives, usually. Yeah. Um, I think I had talked about it um, in my previous episode where I was raised by my grandparents. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, at 13, my dad who had, was always like my best friend and was always there. He had just moved back East to North Carolina from Colorado, like two years previously. And I think I'd seen him once since then. Wow. Um, and then being a 13 year old girl, in middle school, like going through all of that time and everything. And I didn't really have my mom because she never should have really had kids. She was one of those. She always picked um, her boyfriends or whoever she was married to at the time or herself or her friends over her kids. Um, So not having like my mom or my dad and being raised by my grandparents was just it made everything a lot harder than it probably should have been for me. Um, And my grandparents were trying to raise me the way they had raised my mom and my aunt, which the, that world that they were raised in didn't exist anymore. Right. Um, I was, you know, living with the internet and, you know, the beginnings of social media and trying to navigate all that. And they were trying to raise me in, you know, the 80s and the 70s. Different worlds. Yeah. Um, So they didn't understand what I was going through. I didn't have anyone to really turn to besides my friends and music. Um, And I think probably about 12 is when I really started spiraling into depression and, like, dealing with all of that. Um a lot of self-harm um in various you know ways um and then our favorite boys decided to go ahead and drop the whole young and the hopeless album and give us hold on and for whatever reason like be it because that's what i needed at the time or you know whatever it was, that song just like, I don't want to say it saved my life because it was one of many things coming together right around the same time. But that song like kind of told me that, you know, everybody has things going on. Like, Mm -hmm. oh, especially a lot of the lyrics because I was dealing with my grandfather, I think I had mentioned was a um, sheriff. Mm -hmm. Uh, And he wasn't, you know, a abu- like physically abusive, but he was a very overbearing, dominant presence. Mm-hmm. And he could be very intimidating, and he knew that, and he would use that. So if I would be fighting with, like, my grandmother or my aunt, who would come over sometimes, um, he would, like, get me backed up against a wall or a corner and like get his aggressive stance going and start yelling. And, um, so, you know, having song lyrics that talk about, you know, family problems like that kind of, it made me realize that it's not just me and that it'll be okay. Eventually we'll, we'll get through it. Yeah. What, what do you feel helped you? I mean, in addition to the song, you know, what, what do you feel helped you get through like the worst of the worst of all that? Um, I think I, that's around the time I also started really get into getting into writing and poetry 
and drawing and you know i'm still not a great artist but i love writing still so yeah um i think being able to self-express in a way that was healthy and not mm -hmm. self-destructive yeah. Um, yeah it helped a lot yeah so and then i started not necessarily like leaving my old circles of friends behind but like making new friends that weren't ones that i had known since like i was little little so i think that helped a lot too because it brought in other experiences and people that didn't know my family so they didn't already have like oh well you have to do it this way because that's how you were raised kind of mindset right um so i i really think like between the song and all of that coming together at around that same time. That's probably one of the only reasons I'm still here because yeah. I had other people um, coming into my life that were not necessarily good influences down the line, but <laughs> I, I mean, there's, there's absolutely like you were even talking about the song and just realizing how the song made you realize you're not alone. And there's absolutely just something to be said about having a, support system um to help you realize you know one that you're not alone two to get you through that but it, even even just to be there you know right. even even if that isn't like like no one you know you can't necessarily expect like friends to fix your problems but being there and being your friends like that is massive right yeah exactly um but that song, I mean, so whenever, every time I hear it live, I'm like, I have to skip it if I'm watching the live at Brixton mm -hmm. because I just, I, mm. I, um, I, I was going to ask, what's it like for you listening to Hold On now? Um, it's still one of the harder ones because it brings yeah. up a lot of trauma, mm -hmm. really. And that's what it yeah, is. Yeah. It's, it's, tra it's traumatic. Um, so when I hear it live, like, obviously I'm not going to walk out of the concert because they're playing it. Like, it just becomes like this cry fest. Like, I ugly cry. It's not pretty. <laughs> You're not um, the only one no. that ugly cries <laughs> during that song. Just, just I heads up. <laughs> I scream the lyrics with them and like, but then it's cool because they move on to another song and like, it pulls me back out of yeah. the traumatic feelings. Yeah, it, it definitely can be really like I have songs, we all have songs. I mean, hold on being one of them for I think everyone, but um, mm -hmm. that just kind of bring you back to that time. And you sometimes you're like, I, I can't go into that right now. Yeah, that's, I don't have very many skippable GC songs, but that, yeah. that tends to be one of them. Like it's yeah. just such an emotional song for me that Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. hard to listen to unless I'm it's something that I need like right in that moment yeah which makes sense and it's it's I think healthy almost in a way to be like to, to know when you need it what your limits are and and when you just need something else yeah yeah there's definitely been a lot of growth for me since that yeah song came out and that I mean it might have been a catalyst in a way um Obviously, I don't want to give too much power just to a song because that takes sure, away yeah. from my own accomplishments that mm -hmm. I I have. But um, yeah, I don't know. That song is just it's it's just that song, and it's just that song for so many people. It's kind of amazing, really. Yeah. As you look back, and as we kind of uh, wrap up our conversation. If you could go back to your 13-year-old self, like, let's say your 13-year-old self the day before she hears Hold On for the first time and, you know, is, is dealing with dealing with a lot, what would you, what would you like to tell her? Um, just that, you know, everything, it might not seem like it's getting better or it might get darker, but it, it's always going to there's always a light and you can't just let, you know, the temporary anger and sadness, um, consume you. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta at least try, even if it's just like 
for the day, like wake up and say, I have, I want to pet my dog today. I want to go to bed with my, I want to take my dog for a walk. If that's all it takes, then. Animals are great in that sense that like yeah. the physical getting you out of bed. Yeah. Right. Right. But I mean, like, even if there's, you don't think there's something to hold on to for yourself, like find one little thing, just say, Hey, there's a new episode of the show that I love coming out in two days. Like, I just want to make it to that or yeah. just make it the next thing. Like right now it's concerts for me. I'm like, make it so to the same. next concert and we'll so be close. okay. <laughs> so close. Maybe by the time this episode is up, there will be concerts. <laughs> right. I, um, Fingers crossed. I've been kind of in a dark place because of everything because there isn't yeah. any music. So, yeah, you know, next concert for me, I just bought my tickets to Corn and Stained last yeah. night. So make it to August and yeah. maybe things will be a little bit better. Yeah, there you go. Kate, thank you so much for joining me for this. Um, just is there anything else that you wanted to say, wanted to add? No, I think... I think we're all doing, if we're all here talking about this song, we're all doing a pretty good job of getting past whatever oh, drew yeah. us to it, so. Hi, my name is Loriana. Um, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm from Toronto, Ontario. And a little bit about me, I'm currently in my second year studying my master's of uh, clinical psychology. Um, and I'm a huge Good Charlotte fan. I've been a Good Charlotte fan uh, since 2003. Amazing. And listeners, Loriana was previously on the show discussing Better Demons from Generation RX, so her name her voice may sound a little familiar. <laughs> well, Loriana, I would love to hear what the song Hold On means to you. Yeah, so Hold On is um, one of those Good Charlotte songs that I think like defines me as a person. I think that um, when it when it came out, you know, The Young and the Hopeless, that whole album really um, came out at a time when I was like forming my own identity, as yeah. I've talked about before. But um, that particular song, out of all the songs on the album, I think is the one that I identify with the most because it's kind of the reason why I do what I do. It's the reason why I'm studying what I'm studying. Like it sort of was the first um, thing that like prompted me to discover what my calling is in life. So it means a lot to me, obviously. <laughs> so what was that, what was that journey for you in, in hearing that song? I just would love to know more about that pro thought process of like hearing that song and now being someone who's studying clinical psychology and, and is on a path to helping people in that way as a profession. Yeah, so I think, you know, when it when it first came out, there was, I think I was going through things, but also like a lot like people that I knew too, like a good yeah, friend yeah. of mine in grade school um, was going through a lot. And um, we both kind of connected over Good Charlotte and we both really loved Good Charlotte. And um, she was like really going through something and um, like hearing that song and like, seeing like the suicide helpline and hearing other people's stories in the music video, like made me so much more aware of just suffering in general and mm -hmm. in the world and like in the people around me. And um, it kind of like, it inspired me to dig into my own empathy, I guess. And like, yeah. um, I know like this girl that I was friends with in grade school, she actually, um, she she was at a point where she was like ready to give up and yeah. um i ended up like not telling on her but like i i went to the teachers and i went to her mom and i mean I'm, that's like, that's what you should do yeah, yeah. right yeah. and like you know at the time i was so scared to do it but i but i knew that it was the right thing to do and i think that hold on was the thing that like pushed me to do that you know like um sometimes if if you can't you know ask for help and you notice someone else is, is needing help you like that's what you got to do you got to yeah you know so yeah that's that's what that song means to me it's like the thing that made me aware yeah I I would just love to say just on a like general level to everyone listening like it is so much better to have someone be alive and 
getting the care they need and maybe mad at you for telling on them Mm -hmm. than to have them be not getting the care that they need and, and, you know, possibly hurting themselves or, or not around anymore. Um, Exactly. Yeah. And that's never a comfortable conversation to have with anyone. Um, like even like, I'm going to start seeing my own clients next week and obviously like risk assessment and and suicide prevention is like a huge part of, of what I do. And it's even for me, like it's, it's still not a comfortable conversation to have with other people and yeah. with yourself even, you know? Yeah. But, but I think the song, the message is so simple, but powerful and hopeful. Yeah. And there's something about music and hearing it in a song that resonates really strong. Yeah. It's, I think there's a lot about Good Charlotte that allowed people to kind of form their identities. Like, you know, the first album had a lot of songs that felt, you know, very much about high school, like little things I heard you that the click, if we're counting mm-hmm. that, yeah. um, <laughs> that, and then on this album, the anthem that were all about kind of like not being like everyone else, maybe yeah. not fitting in, finding yeah. your own identity and like, it, part part of that of like figuring out who you are sometimes is dealing with you know difficult or scary stuff exactly and I think um when when you're figuring out who you are and then you have those really dark moments where you want to like give up like that I think like that's so like those moments are so hard and so real but sometimes it's like maybe there's something inside you that is actually just changing You know, maybe you don't want to give up entirely. Maybe you just want to leave behind the part of yourself that wants to transform. And I think this song, like the message of holding on, allows people to to see that and to have that opportunity. Yeah, to stick around. And and I mean, if we talk about like Good Charlotte's career as an example for this, like how much has this band changed over time, right? Yes. Kept, Kept the core of, I think, who they are and what they stand for, but changed styles and aesthetics and and everything yeah exactly yeah yeah they and they and they gave up for a minute there too yeah they went on their hiatus we didn't know if they were going to come back but yeah there's always there's always 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 like a chance to start over like someone told me one time every moment is a blank page and yeah and sometimes when i'm having you know a a moment you know where you just want to throw your hands up and be like ah just think every moment is a blank page. You can start over. Yeah. When when you think about, you know, starting to see your own clients, like, soon. I mean, you you will be seeing yeah. clients by the time this episode goes up. Yeah. What What's, like, on your mind? I, I feel like what you learn, I mean – going from classes to, to actually yeah. see someone. That's such a, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. It's honestly like, it's crazy because, you know, you spend so much time in classes, learning things, learning theories, learning all this information. And in reality, when you go out into the field, like it's people, you're dealing with people and it's relationships. Yeah. You're just, you're building relationships with people. Yeah. And that's what everyone says is like, when you when you first get into the room with a client, like throw every theory you know out the door. Don't try to don't try to like think about all the theories. Don't try to seem smart. Don't try to seem competent. Sit there and be with that person and yeah. make that your priority because it's it's a human, right? And you have to build yeah. that that trust and connection. Like. Exactly. And I think that's what like Good Charlotte, but they connected with their fans with this song, right? Yeah. And I think for 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 me, like what's going on in my mind, like seeing clients is I'm going to be seeing adolescents. Um, So I'm going to be like working with kids who were like, just like me when I first started listening to Charlotte. Yeah. So it's like, I have a lot of feelings about it. I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like, I feel like I can empathize with them. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm like, Oh my gosh, is it going to bring me back? Like, am I going to, I don't know. Like I just have, yeah. I'm excited, but nervous. I wonder what are I'm trying to think what are like the what are the depressed emo kids of today listening to like is it Twenty One Pilots right I know I'm actually low key really interested to like yeah. get to know my adolescent clients and kind of like so what are you listening to what are you <laughs> what's did, cool <laughs> did you ever know a band called With the Punches no no so I bring them up uh, because their 
guitarist, Dustin, really, really sweet guy. Um, but at one point he was working, I don't, I don't know his exact title, but in, in some role in, in behavioral health for teens. And like oh. that kind of started because like, I think he like saw a kid wearing a Bayside shirt and like had a conversation. I think it was Bayside had this conversation with this kid cause they connected about music and, yeah, and yeah. that like really, I guess, turned on like a, you know, driving him. To do yeah. That. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah, music and mental health are so intertwined, and artists yeah. have this platform to, to reach so many different people um, yeah. and to connect with people so powerfully. So um, I think for me, like, I think if I had any talent, I would probably be, like, a songwriter, a musician, or, like, a singer, but I don't. So I think that, that instead, my, yeah, my calling is, is therapy and connecting with people that way. I love that. And that's an amazing <laughs> way. I mean, that's such a direct way to connect with people and to yeah. help with people. Yeah. As we wrap up, Loriana, I mean, is there anything else that you wanted to share about Hold On either as it personally connects with you or just on a greater, greater level, your thoughts on it? Um, Hold On is that song, like when I see it live, um, there's no other song like it. The emotion yeah. that you feel in the room. Um, I know like when I'm traveling with my friends and seeing each other with my friends, a lot of my friends have like a very deep personal connection to that song and get very emotional when they see it live. And like, just, it's the ultimate example of sitting with emotions and just feel like not trying to push them away or anything, but when you're Let seeing it live like and everybody, it, yeah. and like so many people are crying and like, you, it's like, it shows you that like, feeling your feelings can be a beautiful thing, you know? Yeah. And this yeah. song, like, really um, captures that. Yeah. I love that. And I think it's, like, especially after doing this and doing this podcast, the next time I see it live, like, waterworks. Right? Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Especially yeah. just being around people in general and then getting to, like, yeah. you know? <laughs> people's tears falling onto their masks. Like. Right, 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 right. Um, Loriana, this has been wonderful. Thank you so Thank much you. for being a part of this. Of course. Any, anytime. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dorina Samoylenko. Uh, I'm a university student and I'm also uh, a musician. You may know me as Darin Sam X on YouTube. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. Perfect. And listeners, you, rem you may remember Dorina from the episode talking about actual pain. That was episode 65. Well, Darina, I would just love to start off by asking, what was your reaction to Hold On when you first heard it? So I uh, immediately related to it on a very personal level uh, because uh, since the very young age, I was struggling with anxiety and then with depression as well. So uh, I knew exactly what that song was about because yeah. I knew what it was like to be on the age. Yeah. And what do you think about Hold On, was it that specifically connected to you? Because I know that like before you had even gotten into GC, you were into a lot of other bands and bands like, you know, All Time Low, for example, has songs that also relate to it. But what specifically was special about Hold On? I think what was special about Hold On it was that it was, I think, about more like suicide, like exactly mm -hmm. trying to end your life. And I was uh, through that at some point, which was actually before I was into Charlotte, but still I could relate to it because I'm still at the, that point in life where bad times do come back from time to time. But at least I don't feel like ending my life anymore. Good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that, that you don't feel like that anymore. But that's true. And that's a good point that like often issues with, you know, depression, anxiety, like they don't necessarily just go away, right? Like they sometimes last and like you need to continue taking care of yourself and managing it so that you stay healthy and so that you don't slip back to that, you know, really, really dark place. Yeah, it, it is exactly what it is for me. And uh, especially the line, it's not over. Like it, it always gets me and yeah. uh, it actually became my motto for when, when I'm close to being on the edge. I keep reminding myself that life is not over. I love that. I love that. It's definitely a powerful like motto and it's very like it's simple. It's to the point, but 
that's kind of all you need sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Just realizing that there are things in life to live for, even if bad times are so bad. Definitely. Well, I would also love to know, Darina, like, as a guitar player, what are your thoughts on some of the guitar parts in this song? I actually learned how to play Hold On a few months ago, but it's kind of complex, especially on the bridge. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I especially love uh, the verse and intro part. Uh, It is so, well, not easy to play, but it's really fun to play for me. Uh, It's just, this melody is just really charming for me, and uh, it's one of my favorite melodies, I think. The the melody and, like, the intro makes... And, and I guess this is partially because this song follows My Bloody Valentine on the album, which has some, like, rain sounds, I want to say. Um, but the intro to the song makes me think of, like, a rainy night and, you know, you've come in from the rain and, you know, maybe then your friend is, like, coming to talk to you and it's going to say, hey, like, it's okay, like, hold on, like, it's not over. Actually, that's a uh, really interesting point. Uh, For me, it's more like uh, you're in the rain and Mm. suddenly you see uh, the light in the sky, like the sun starts shining through the clouds. Yeah, yeah. And maybe even uh, there's even a rainbow, which is something beautiful, something to live for. I think it's kind of sign of hope. I love that. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Finding that sign of hope. And like a rainbow is such a great metaphor because that is seeing the hope and you wouldn't have seen that hope without the rain you know Mm -hmm. it i mean it calls back like i have a let the music play tattoo and there's a line in that song there's no way to explain why life is filled with so much pain but do the flowers ever grow in the places that don't rain yeah i love actually how you just put this parallel with let the music play uh I just uh, love how, how Hold On is reflected in other Charlotte songs, sort mm-hmm. of, like from Generation RX and even from Cardiology and in every other album, I think there's at least one song that relates to Hold On in a way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you think on like Chronicles, there's, well, Chronicles is definitely like a darker take, but mm-hmm. SOS and Meet My Maker, which like as dark as those are, like, I feel like it's and we talked about this in the episodes for the songs, but like it's good to talk about that you know because if you don't talk about it that's when people feel like they can't do anything like they can't go on um good morning revival we have march on and also face the strange if you count that um mm-hmm. and then you're gone also on good morning revival if you count that um cardiology we have let the music play youth yeah. authority I think maybe life is hard, maybe. Yeah, yeah, life is hard. Um, maybe war, in a way, kind of moving on on Youth Authority, but that's like a sort of different topic. But And then obviously Generation RX, I think it's just kind of a big thing. Big yeah, thing the entire album pretty much. Mental health, yeah. Well, Darina, is there like a specific story you would love to share about a time when Hold On connected with you? I think it was when I first saw the music video Mm. uh, because at that point I hadn't thought about my depression for a very long time. Right. Uh, But I was on the edge of entering the bad uh, time of my life again. And so I saw the music video for the first time. So people who lost someone uh, uh, that uh, lost them to suicide and uh, somehow it hit me really hard because I suddenly realized for the first time in my life that other people would suffer as well yeah. uh, if I choose to leave. Yeah. And so it made me want to hold on even more than ever. Yeah. It's kind of, it's sobering, I think, like seeing the, the survivors talking mm-hmm. like that. It's very, like, it's chilling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just talked to people who also went to through similar things and I just can't imagine yeah. like like the girl in the music video said I can't imagine not being here anymore yeah and that's a beautiful feeling when you like 
finally realized like, oh my God, like I can't imagine not being here and not experiencing, you know, whatever. The best things in life. Yeah. Well, Darina, this has been wonderful. Is there anything else you'd want to share about Hold On? I just think that maybe of all Gisharala songs, like it might not be my number one favorite song, but it is definitely one of those songs that like hit you the hardest. Yeah. yeah. Like, it may, definitely make you truly feel and think about your life and if there is something that you can and want to change. Yeah. I love that. That's very well said. Darina, thank you so much for coming on this special episode. Thank you for having me. Okay, so um, my name is Jose. My pronouns are he, him. I currently work in the mental health field, helping families out to have the coping skills and education on what mental health is. I worked in the mental health field for seven years now, wow. um, kind of more of a peer to help you know teenagers and families be able to know that recovery is possible and that you know there is hope. That's amazing, and that Jose, that's incredible, and I I feel like. I can see a passion in you for just wanting to help people. And it seems like hold on would certainly be something that just connects with that passion. Yes. I actually mentioned it in my life stories when, it, you know, just self disclosing with family, you know, that, that song helped me out. Yeah. Um, the reason for it uh, was, you know, I got introduced to good Charlotte by my older brother. Mm -hmm. You know, I listened to all the albums, um, you know, Lifestyle was the first song, but the one that really impacted me the most was, you know, Hold On, you know, especially the music video. Yeah. You know, seeing the testimonies and kind of seeing, you know, the families be able to help out, you know, you know, kind of, you know, when in the sense of help out, like, you know, say, you know, just hold on, you know, yeah. it gets better. And honestly, that was pretty impactful for me i love that so what what do you think about hold on you know having heard lifestyles and i would assume probably also you know the anthem maybe girls and boys what about hold on you know really connected with you it's honestly one uh, well all the all the lyrics you know were very impactful mm -hmm. but it's the one the one that really did touch me is hold on if you feel like letting go. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of like, you know, my motto now, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of, hold, you know, holding on, you know, because, you know, things will get better. Yeah. When you say things get better, like, is that something that you feel like you felt in your own life? Like, have you discovered that for yourself to be true? Yeah, because um, honestly, you know, if I had my dark moments of my life, sure, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of one of the reasons why I got into the mental health field. Yeah, was you know having those dark moments, and honestly, like I said, you know, that song since you know when it came out actually helped me, you know, to kind of not give up, even you know in my darkest moment, you know, I would tell myself, you know. I need to hold on. So why did you why did you hold on through the darkest moments? Honestly, um, it was you know, you know kind of I don't know something about the song motivated me, mm -hmm. but especially it was you know the music video seeing you know the impact on those who were left behind. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. seeing you know the struggles. Yeah. And honestly, the kind of the lyrics of Hold On, you know, it's kind of, you know, very impactful um, for me because it was like, you know what, you know, I'll meet, soon meet people who, you know, are going through the same thing. And, you know, and I have, you know, I've been into mental health urgent centers and, you know, met people who were similar to me and, you know, I was able to, you know, kind of have that support knowing that, you know, I'm not the only one going through this. Yeah. Realizing that you're not alone is that like other people have gone through it. It, 
it's powerful because it kind of shows you, well, if someone else can get through this, maybe I can get through it. And I think it makes you feel like understood and just not alone in the world. Yeah, and that's kind of the thing I've been trying to instill in people. Yeah. It's kind of the reason I started making a blog. Oh. Uh, yeah, because honestly, I want to show people, you know, that there is hope, you know, that, you know, your life doesn't have to end. It gets better. Yeah. Well, Jose, like, as you, as you look back on, you know, both your self when you had your darkest moments as well as just maybe kind of look at anyone that's in those you know really dark moments right now where they're thinking about hurting themselves or taking their life like what what do you wish you could say to someone that's in that moment right now honestly it's you know reach out yeah it's the thing that hurts the most is that feeling alone yeah Uh, Yeah. because honestly I felt that no one would understand, but, you know, there's a whole community out there that, you know, does understand. Yeah. And, you know, just reach out. Um, it will be scary because uh, you don't know how people react, mm-hmm. but, you know, there is help. Yeah. I love that. And I, I want to leave listeners. I just want to leave you all with a reminder that reaching out is a sign of strength it is not a sign of weakness it's it shows that you have the courage to take care of yourself to to get healthy to be okay it it shows a lot of strength to ask for help yes uh, um and especially you know if it's you don't know what's going on you know yeah just get that professional help you know there's nothing mm-hmm. wrong you know it's not a sign of weakness Honestly, it's, you know, better to kind of have an idea of what is going on, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, Jose, as we wrap up, is there anything else that you would want to say about Hold On? Honestly, um, I really recommend people listen to it. Yeah. Uh, just because it is, like, Good Charlotte is my number one band. It's the one band I want to go see live once all this is over. Yeah. Um, you know, I've collected all their out, um, CDs. Like, it's the only band that I've listened to every single song. You know, I the first song I remember was Anthem that I listened to. But honestly, you know, Hold On, I know, has a special place in everyone's heart. Mm-hmm. Just because of, you know, the meaning behind it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it definitely has a special meaning. Well, Jose, thank you so much for being a part of this special episode. It it really makes me happy that, you know, not only that you held on, but that you're able to work in the mental health field and help people who, you know, maybe were feeling like you were feeling at one point. Yeah, that's like I said, I think all this just came from that one song. Yeah. Because honestly, it's been my motto. It's amazing. It's a great motto. Jose, thank you so much. Thanks for having me here. Hi, guys. My name is Sam. I'm from New Jersey. This is my second time on Molly's podcast, and it's awesome. I love Good Charlotte. I've been a fan since I was 16, and I'm stoked to be here with you guys. Sam, thank you for coming back on the show. Listeners, Sam was previously on Generation GC talking about cold song from Generation RX. Well, Sam, to start off our conversation, I would love to know what it was like hearing Hold On live for the first time. It was very surreal, and I think my first Good Charlotte show was actually when I was about in my 20s. So, yeah. you know, I've been a fan for the band for years, so seeing it live and in person, it was a whole different experience. Um, I was actually with my friend Allie. We went to Webster. I think it was Webster Hall for one of their reunion shows. So that was the first time I got to experience that live and the crowd. It was surreal. And that was just after they had gotten back from hiatus, right? Mm -hmm. So it was a whole, I think it was a whole different ballgame. I'm sure. Yeah. Just because number one, you had waited so long and there were a couple of years there where we all thought we would never get to see Good Charlotte live mm-hmm. again. 
And then I think the most memorable was the second time that we got to see them when we mm -hmm. were side stage. And I was, yeah. I was, I was about to cry. I was crying very much. Were you crying when it happened? I think I was close. Um, it was definitely there. Yeah. What do you think it is about Hold On that just really hits you and makes you so emotional? I think because, you know, that was from one of their first records and just mm -hmm. as a whole, the album really resonated with me. And at the time, you know, I was still going through a lot of life things. I lost my dad. So mm -hmm. the song just resonated with me then. And even as an adult, it still was. So what, what do you think about Hold On specifically? Because you're someone that's into music, right? So what do you think it is about like hold on kind of i guess that makes it stick out from you know i guess any, any other song that might have come out either come out around the same time or that you were listening to when you were a teenager um that just really extra stuck out to you i think with hold on it was more so that there is hope at the end of the tunnel and you know whatever you're dealing with you can go through it and it was nice to have kind of that outlet where I didn't really need to say anything, but the song was there anytime I needed it. Yeah. When you look back at your younger self who was maybe struggling with a lot of things and the, you know, the, the younger self that needed that reminder, like, what do you wish you could say to her? I wish I could tell her that, you know, it may seem bleak now, but once you get through this rough patch, you know, you'll, you'll still face more obstacles and it won't always be easy, but, you know, you just have to keep pushing through it and it's always worth it in the long run. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And you're totally right. It is always worth it. And, you know, pushing through the obstacles is not always easy. I mean, it's never easy, right? But right. you have to keep going. And I think that song is just perfect because it resonates with anyone at any age and you know it's even one of those songs where you can just plug in on your way home and just cry to it if you have to like it's just kind of there and it's always been a therapy outlet for me yeah definitely very therapeutic um and it's it's universal in that it's like it connects so strongly with an emotion i think a lot of people feel and it does paint you know a specific picture but it also, I think regardless of whether that specific picture the song paints, regardless of whether that connects to you, the emotion of the song can connect to you very much. Right. No, I agree. And I think the emotion in that song is just so raw and the guys really put it out there because, you, you know, at the time, mental health was such a strong, mm -hmm. it was such a strong, um, trying to figure out how to word this. Like taboo? It was taboo, and not many people were really willing to talk about it. So, yeah. you know, showing any type of emotion or weakness, I feel like it was always kind of frowned upon. And, you know, our parents really didn't understand it at the time mm -hmm. either. So it was really hard to talk about and address. So I think, you know, the song was helpful in a lot of areas. Yeah. Yeah, I think it helped start a conversation, and it... it was not the only song right that that talked about it but i think that was kind of at the beginning of a period where more and more bands were writing in a very outspoken way about mental health and depression and suicide i think it opened up a big door and a big outlet and was in our music community which was nice at the yeah time. and it still is a nice thing too so. oh very nice yeah well sam i would love to ask you why did you hold on you know, the, I think what did it for me was, you know, there's still so much that I haven't done and, you know, I wanted to see myself evolve as a person and, a, you know, a real adult. Yeah. And I, and it was my family too. And, you know, I had a good support system of friends like you, obviously, and then, you know, people that I have met and, you know, they always give me reasons to keep going and keep pushing and to keep bettering myself as an adult. Yeah. I love that. Sam, this has been wonderful. Is there anything else that, you know, that you would like to say about Hold On or that you would just like to share with our listeners? 
I'm just so glad that, you know, people are so open about mental mm -hmm. health now. And I really do think that hold on was a big uh, path into the right direction when, you know, the song came out. And it's just been such a big part of my life. So I'm just glad that, you know, we have that community and we have the music industry that really gets it and understands it. And I'm thankful for that. Yeah, we definitely do. Sam, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Thank you for having me. I always love listening to your podcast and you're doing an awesome job. So. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Emma. I am 38 years old. Um, I'm from Redditch in England, which is just south of Birmingham, so nice and central. Um, been a good Charlotte fan since 2002. Um, they were played on the radio just one evening, like, here's a new band, check them out, and my love with them went from there. Um, myself and my partner, our first date was a Good Charlotte gig. Um, Incredible. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we worked together and we got chatting about best gigs, and I had a ticket for um, a Good Charlotte gig in London. I was like, well, you should come. And it kind of it, it went from there 10 years ago, so... Um, that's, that's, and, that's how you know it's real love. Yeah. 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 I love that. Almost I called off it. our daughter, um, Charlotte, but we weren't a hundred percent sure, but then sure, we called sure. our cat Charlie, which was perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Well, Emma, I would love to hear what was your reaction the first time that you heard, hold on. Hey, um, I was driving in my car. Um, I was on my way to work. I used to work for Blockbuster Video. So dr driving in for a nice long double shift. Um, and it, it came on the radio just one day and I was going through a bit of a rough time with, mm. uh, I was at uni, I was in a full-time job and my relationship was breaking down at the time, you know, first love and all that. It's just the end of the world. Yeah. Um, sort of, and it just, it hit me, like the emotions of the song really hit me. To the point that I actually had to pull over, um, had to pull over, sort of stop, sort of compose myself, and and ever since that point, that song's kind kind of been my anchor. Um, so a few months later, um, was in a real bad depression. I was like absolute rock bottom, and it, it was just it was that song and the, the meaning of the song that just kept me going. But any any time I thought I don't want to be here. It just kept me going and what 17 18 years later still here yeah <laughs> so it, it worked <laughs> what what do you think about hold on specifically like just hit for you were you already a good charlotte fan when you heard hold on i was already a good charlotte fan the first okay. the first good charlotte songs i heard were um lifestyles and girls and boys like they this radio station did a package so they had interviews and they had a couple of songs cool. and they were the songs that sort of hooked me in and then it was sort of um hold on was released i think it was i don't think it was the next song released but the song after that mm -hmm. um so it was, i think it must have been like a premiere play on a radio um and yeah it just continued i think that was what cemented my love with the band so i was already a fan but that was the that was the specific song that just hooked me completely well it sounds like that hold on like really just hits you on a personal level like yeah i think lifestyles and girls and boys are songs that like a lot of us love and like we connect to but hold on yeah. is definitely and, and the like the anthem i think is personal for a lot of people yeah a yeah. lot of fans i've talked to have also felt like they didn't fit in but yeah hold on is, is a little deeper yeah i think everyone's they might not have the personal experience of going through depression or suicide or anything or suicidal thoughts um but i think everyone knows at least one person and i think because the song is so raw and honest and then especially when you couple it with the video yeah with the interviews it it just it really hits you and it makes you stop and it makes you think i yeah, it, it really does make you think um, the video. I mean, a lot of people are bringing up the video, and it's true. Like, it really makes the song just so much more powerful yeah. and intense. Yeah. Um, 
and just adds another level to that. And I've heard, Emma, that you have a permanent connection to hold on in the form of a tattoo. So do you want to describe it for us? Yeah, so um, I always wanted a tattoo and I always wanted it to be personal. So I'd, uh, like, I didn't want just like anything random. So it took me about five years to, from actually having the idea to having it done. And it's <laughs> the, uh, the Chinese translation of Hold On. Um, now, obviously, back then it was it was probably about 12, 13 years ago, and I was trusting Google Translate because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, how else are you going to get a translation? Um, but my friend knew um, somebody that spoke Chinese and she presented the image and said, can you tell me what this translates yeah. to? And luckily it was right. So I went and I got it done. and. It's there now. It's on my back, on my shoulder. So it's almost like it's saying, "My past is behind me." But oh, never I forget. love that the placement yeah. is wow. Yeah, people talk about like you know a tattoo and and what the tattoo is, but the placement too, I think, can just have so much meaning. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I, I always said like I didn't want just anything. I just I wanted something that meant something. I've I've got to. And the other one is connected to a friend of mine that passed away mm. um, when I was 18. So both were very personal for, for very different reasons. Sure, sure. And was there a reason that you wanted to get it in Chinese? I I don't quite remember why I wanted it in Chinese. Um, I, it was kind of like the, the thing at the time with tattoos. Yeah, it, it was definitely different... like a thing in the early 2000s. Yeah. 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 Um, I think it was more that I didn't have to explain it to anybody mm. if they asked. Mm. I wanted it in um, a language that not many people would speak in England. Um, and I thought, I just I fell on Chinese because I've always liked like the symbols and, and everything. So I just, it connected with me. Um, but then the day I had it done, I went out that evening for my birthday and I had some guy come up to me poking me going, what does it mean? Oh, I like, hate when people like try to poke and touch your tattoos. Yeah, I'm like, no. It only compliment just from that afar. Day as well. <laughs> yeah, especially when oh god. Yeah, so it was it was still covered um, in like the clear film. So I was I just was like trying my hardest to ignore this random guy who clearly had a few too many and just because right. it's not one that you want to tell strangers like. People that right, to me right. know what it means, but yeah, it yeah, was like a, what what do you uh, have strangers since then have strangers like asked about it and if they do never. what do they, okay. Ne never. Um because they're probably just like, get, okay, it's peace or love or something like yeah, that. Like they, they can they can assume whatever. Um, yeah. But no, no one's no one that in a, in a bar or in the street or anything has ever stopped me and said Yeah. Was it? But normally it's sort of placed underneath, like even my top, or if I'm wearing a vest, it's under the, the strap of the vest, so it's not that visible to many people. Yeah, so. it, it's. I think it's good to be able to talk, you know, with the ones you love, the ones you're close to, about yeah. what, you know, what what you have experienced in the past, because that you know shapes who you are today, and yeah. and what you're currently experiencing, but. I don't think anyone should feel obligated to express to strangers or the internet yeah. in, in any way that they're not comfortable to, yeah. uh, you know, their deepest and darkest struggles with mental exactly. health. Exactly. Mental health, it's, I, I don't know what it's like in America, but in, in the UK, until recently, it was still a very private discussion. Like, you yeah. didn't sort of maybe in the last seven to eight years, it's become more open. Um, like you didn't talk about it. Mm -hmm. You just, you would talk to your family, your, your closest friends, but like the wider definitely community, you just. Similar here, I think. Like, you know, when I was in middle school, even high school, you definitely did not tell people you saw a yeah. therapist. Yeah. And now yeah. it's like, it's almost a whole brand of humor that people will like talk about something their therapist said on Twitter. Like, yeah. you know, um, I think people are just more frank about it. And it doesn't mean there's not still work to be done. I think there 
definitely is, but yeah. um, it's definitely been an improvement. Massively, massively. Um, I think I think between America and the UK, it's probably quite similar. Like you yeah. say, like throwaway remarks, but like the, the actual personal stuff is still between you and your therapist. Yeah. Well, Emma, as we as we wrap up our conversation on hold on, if you could go back either to yourself in you know two thousand two, just before she's heard this song, or to anyone that's feeling the way that you did at that time, what what would you like to say? That the way you're feeling as it as you are right now, there are so many options out of it. There's not yeah. there's not nowhere to go. There there are people that you can talk to, there are there are helplines if you don't want to talk to your friends and family. Like you can you can phone a like a, a trained stranger and talk to them um there are just so many different options and from my experience 17 18 years down the line i'm glad i chose to to stay because yeah. i've got a family i've got a career i've got a happy life now and yeah there's ups and downs there's always ups and downs but you're strong and you're stronger than you realize I love that. Emma, thank you so much for coming on this special episode to talk about Hold Not On. Not a problem. Not a problem. Thank you. Thank you once again to Mark, Leah, Alicia, Carla, Ashley, Kate, Loriana, Darina, Jose, Sam, and Emma for coming on this incredibly important, really wonderful episode of Generation GC on Hold On. Once again, and as always, my name is Molly Huddleston. I've been your host, Last week, we talked about Let Me Go from Good Charlotte, and next week, we will finish up part two of the Hold On discussion. Thank you all so much for tuning in. You can follow Generation GC at Generation GC Pod, P-O-D, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and you can follow me, Molly, at M. Huddleston, M-H-U-D-E-L-S-O-N, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for tuning in. Please make sure to rate the show, subscribe on your favorite podcast provider, and please tell a friend. It's the best way to spread the word.